And I call Ruth Maguire, the final speaker in the open debate. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome the opportunity to contribute to this debate on the importance of continued investment in delivering and reforming public services for Scotland's people and communities. Whilst things have undoubtedly been challenging for quite some time, in fact, since the beginning of Tory austerity over a decade ago, it's clear that the economic damage of Brexit, which means up to £3.7 billion of potential funding for our public services, has been lost, has piled on additional pressure. And much like the austerity agenda, is the result of a political choice, one of course that the majority of Scottish citizens voted against. In speaking to the Scottish Government's motion and legacy of successful public service reform in recent years, including health and social care partnerships and Social Security Scotland, I want to be clear that whilst outcomes have improved for many people and communities, particularly um, in terms of the absolute focus that so Social Security Scotland has in treating people with dignity and respect, something that's been transformational and that all parties in this, in this Parliament contributed to, one person not having their rights realised in this country is one too many. And we all of us need to focus on the policy implementation gap that's clear in several areas. The slightly hyperbolic rhetoric from some opposition colleagues might have you thinking our country is in absolute tatters. That's both untrue and unhelpful when seeking to reform services. But it'd be equally unhelpful to close our eyes to the very real challenges our public services are facing and the impact that that has on many of our vulnerable citizens. Colleagues on the Education, Children and Young People Committee saw a stark illustration of that with regards to our disabled children and young people. Of course, as with everything, there are pockets of excellent practice, but it's not good enough that the rights of any children and young people are not being realised. Colleagues across the Chamber will also be aware of the numbers of people in their constituency who are not receiving their full entitlement of social care, care that's crucial to sustain them in a dignified manner in their own homes. Health and social care integration was absolutely the right thing to do. And again, there are pockets of excellent practice and a skilled, committed workforce doing their very best, work that makes the lives of citizens better. However, there's much to learn from what's not worked as well. For the proposed National Care Service to succeed, there must be clarity on what about its structure will mean. For, from the perspective of those who are entitled to the services, not the organisations or the professionals, clarity on things like how a disabled citizen assessed as requiring additional support in their home to be healthy and thrive will actually get it. And clarity in how a citizen returning to their home from a serious operation will have the adaptations done that they've been assessed as needing by a professional to ensure they're safe, completed in a timely manner. It's no exaggeration to see that those matters that I raised there are matters of life and death. My constituents will also want to be clear on whether key local services should be delivered on a project basis. Services like mental health support for vulnerable young people. Should boards be able to withdraw with no consultation, no equality impact assessment or transition arrangements in place. World leading human rights based approaches to policy and legislation are a wonderful thing to talk to. They're what we should be aspiring to, but they must be backed up by delivery and access to redress where rights are not realised. Further reform to public services will be necessary to ensure that public services remain fiscally sustainable and to improve outcomes for all Scotland's people and communities. Public sector workers are key to the success and, as I acknowledged earlier, they're doing an excellent job in some challenging circumstances. Showing how much we value them will mean continuing with fair pay and conditions. The Government motion states that further reform will require to focus on prevention and early intervention, involve people in communities in design and embrace the power of digital technologies. As my colleague John um, Mason laid out, in terms of focus on prevention and early intervention, I think we all intuitively know that that's the right thing to do. We also have screeds of evidence that that's the right thing to do for outcomes for people, and it's also the most cost-effective way to operate. But there's going to be required bravery to actually deliver that. Because investing additional resource in prevention and early intervention will often involve shifting resource from elsewhere. 
difficult in times of abundance, even more challenging in the sort of fiscal environment we find ourselves in now. At the beginning of my remarks, I noted that political choices of austerity and Brexit made elsewhere that put our public services at risk. Choices that our citizens in Scotland did not vote for. Now, whatever constitutional arrangement Scotland has, there is a lot of work to do. But what is crystal clear to me is that until Scotland's independence is restored, we will always be at risk from political decisions made elsewhere. And with the amount of challenges our communities face, that's frankly heartbreaking. I agree independence is urgent.